the Global Dressage Forum North America, the ultimate educational experience where champions meet. DressageClinic.com A world of knowledge at your fingertips. I'd like to start uh, again with the basis of what we're trying to do. And for me, you've heard it all already, but for me, dressage is about reaction. Um, I always say to, to riders, you know, if a horse is behind your leg in a dressage competition, the worst that can happen is you'll get low points. But in the other disciplines, if a horse is behind your leg um, coming into a cross-country fence or a show jumping, um, it's a little more serious. You break your neck, you know. It's a little bit more serious than getting low points off us miserable dressage judges. Um, <laughs> I'll just so. give you the stage. <laughs> we are all waiting in great anticipation. Basically, all I want to try to show you is, again, you know, what we've seen already, but with the focus on the reactions. Um, for me, there are three areas if you are to be able to train a horse to a high level without limits. And it's got to be uh, beginning with reaction. Um, first of all, Louisa, can you hear me through your... Okay, perfect. Um, Louisa, just walk for a while. And uh, for me, it's all about uh, some basic, simple areas. Not, I don't mean easy, but it's not complicated. A horse, for me, has to be in front of the rider's leg, um, in a good rhythm and balance, and to work without any limits through a suppled frame. Um, and the other area for me which is vital is that every horse is loose, supple, and submissive in the bend. And I'll go into a bit more detail about what I mean with that in a moment, but uh, Andreas asked me a little bit what were some of the things that I see uh, that could be better in what we're seeing in competition. And I don't know about you, but I see too much often riders overriding. And riders override when they don't get enough reaction from their horse. Uh, and you see a lot of slightly backward contact points, riders sitting and pushing and shoving the horse against a backward contact. End result, limited paces, incorrect frame, stiff horses, you know. I'm thinking of the worst scenario now. But if those riders uh, could really take a look and think, I always say to, to riders, you must feel that a horse in the end is active enough that you don't have to push it, and it's balanced enough that you don't have to hold it. Then the horse can use itself. But if you're hanging on to the front end and driving away at the back end, all you do is put the horse in a vice and make it and prevent it from using itself. And we do see too much of that to one degree or another. Um, so to begin with, um, and I should introduce uh, Louisa a little bit before we start. Uh, Louisa is actually a, a long-term student of Anne Gribbons and uh, has ridden with me on, on the clinic uh, over a couple of days. And I'm so impressed. We heard it already. I think especially Christolot said something about if you were going to choose a student, uh, 
and she talked about work ethic. She shouldn't blush now, but this girl can work. You know, the couple of days I spent, there were no excuses. Whatever you said, she did it. She only wanted it to get better and better. You have some information. Thank you. I do. And uh, it's uh, her. She's riding Baltazar. It's uh, Louisa Edie riding Baltazar. Baltazar is an 11 year old gelding by Idicus, bred by Madeline Austin from Vermont, and owned by Frederica Cardello. Thank you. And uh, when, when Louisa first walked in the arena, I thought to myself, yeah, it's a nice horse. Um, nothing too special. It looked normal. But it was really interesting um, as we went on and developed his reactions and his balance. Um, he rather surprised me. And I think it would be quite interesting I think he'd be a very interesting horse to use in this situation. Um, so I'll just go through with Louisa a little bit what we did over the couple of days and we'll see what develops. Um, for me, I don't think you should, you've heard this again already, I don't think you should keep a horse breathing fire, you know, for the entire time. I think it's very, very important to be able to switch a horse on and switch a horse off. And to switch a horse off, I think, is equally important uh, for the mental and physical health. Um, you know, they can't keep the intensity of high power work the whole time. They, you would burn them out physically and mentally. But let's see what we can develop. I think you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. To begin with, uh, Louisa, just put the horse in a normal frame and let's just have a little check on the reaction department. <laughs> The Global Dressage Forum North America, the ultimate educational experience where champions meet. Dressageclinic.com A world of knowledge at your fingertips. Dressageclinic.com is an educational website that allows you to enter the world of dressage training through videos of top-seated international dressage trainers, writers, and lecturers. Experience the mastery of some of the world's top trainers from the privacy of your own virtual ringside seat as they guide you through all facets of dressage discipline, sharing their valuable insights and instructions. The upcoming new video section is updated each month to provide you with information on the latest training videos to be showcased on the site. The special features section gives you easy access to the training videos that are currently available online, while the search training section allows you to find videos based on a wide variety of categories. Membership to DressageClinic.com provides you with instant access to an international array of recognized trainers from the United States, Canada, Germany, Holland, Belgium, Spain, and many other countries, each sharing their knowledge on a wide variety of educational and informative subjects. <laughs> 